after our last episode, the Riverside chat, some of some of our friends have asked, what do you mean by Riverside? And some of our own people have asked, what is Riverside? And I just wanted to say uh, to the audience as well as to our own group that I mean, Riverside is nothing but when we don't know what we are speaking, we just speak. <laughs> so it's more like it's more like a, a free flow. Uh, and I also the river is a concept which is which we use within our office, part of our tribe culture. I think uh, it should be slippery slope. It, uh, so Shiju was suggesting me. I mean, why don't we why don't we keep this uh, change the name to slippery slope? Uh, that means we keep shifting away from. The topic. Uh, the topic. So <laughs> it's fun. Uh, anyway, so we we're going to continue to use the river side. So Shiju, last time we spoke about the neural intelligence, uh, how things work from and how are we visualizing uh, the neural intelligence part of it. And we we spoke about Ajay who is working on the emotional side of the machines and stuff like Correct. that. So this time I think we will prob we will probably talk around the machines, the thinking capability of the machine that we are uh, we are introducing. And also, how therefore the emotions part. Now, today we have Ajay. So, in our last conversation, we had Ajay, and Ajay needs a little bit of an introduction, uh, even though we know, uh, most of us might not know. Uh, and also, in terms of how you feel about, and both of you, I mean, my simple question would be how you both felt about the whole journey so far. So, you're there for the last four or five years or something like that. And since the time you've, you're here, we, we are talking about the whole thing and we are developing this capability. How do you see this whole thing? And I think, I think probably Ajay can start and then uh, Shiju can pitch it. So, the, it's about how the inception of the journey. It's all about how I uh, came here and how, I, how our minds work together. To begin with, it's like we all had uh, dreams of making something new, something that is useful for the people around us in, in a decentralized manner. So that makes everyone uh, part of the whole journey and this is where our visions collided like we became part of the same journey in Correct. some way or the other so universe conspired in that manner <laughs> exactly so even though all of us are from different backgrounds we had the same vision and we put in our skills for the same reason out there by the way i'm not very sure whether i've introduced you as an actual doctor <laughs> uh, well, Shiju is a doctorate in uh, AI. Uh, and this is a proper, Ajay is a proper doctor, uh, doctor biology, biology doctor. Biology. <laughs> Especially when, when it comes to working in, in the intersection, you need to think beyond the profession. Correct. So that is where how magic happens at the space of intersection. Because you need to let the other person know what your expertise is in as simple as possible so that the concepts are clear. Correct. And the other person. And I think when, when you joined, it was COVID time. Uh, it was prior to that. Yeah, it was prior COVID. To that. It was COVID. Uh, yeah. And uh, how did you manage all this? I mean, because you guys are not meeting each other. Shiju was already working on something halfway through. You were coming in. Yeah. So the whole journey, I, the odds were stacked so much against us. I mean, it's COVID. I am working from home. I come from a medical background, and I had to get an idea about what is the current status of AI, machine learning, and stuff. So, I had to be receptive on whatever uh, my colleague Shiju had to offer me. So, all those were new for me. And he too was so receptive in the way that whatever background I had in life sciences, he was so receptive and that is where the magic happened Correct. in creating such uh, a machine that is able to think and which, is a, which has the potential to be a true agent on its own. Mm. It was really a wonderful journey. So you're coming from all the biological background, speaking about so much of new concepts to me. I mean, I, I was awed with the way you connected physics, chemistry, biology. Then you spoke about intelligence and a little bit of philosophy is coming in here and there. So, so much of information. And we have to speak about all these things. We have to connect all these disciplines. So it's totally interdisciplinary work. Like last time we spoke about yeah. how important the interdisciplinary research is. So five or six disciplines has to be connected together to make something beautiful. So that was the challenge. We were connected remotely through teams. So it was, and, it was a little difficult. And the specialty about understanding intelligence and how the brain works is that as you learn more and more, 
the uncertainty increases exponentially <laughs> along with <it>. so <laughs> you yeah. you actually trade a narrow path so unless the team or the one you are working with is not actually emotionally able to uh, adapt to the when, when i when i look at the whole space that we are in um and when I also when i look into the world uh, the, look to the world how the scientists and various various such towers are thinking i kind of started seeing that there is a philosophy there is there is this philosophy spirituality science all three are merging correct and it's uh, the lines earlier it used to be like two different spaces now they are all coming together yes uh, that's very fascinating to see and that is happening in our uh, in our work exactly yes. uh, i therefore i kind of feel like the the nature's rhythm exists in whatever that we are doing yes uh, there is so much beauty in that and it it's wonderful anyways so that, that beauty actually set the tone for the team as well correct correct the team continues our philosophy and our thought process and who are is into it they can easily feel it yes uh, that, uh, that that is what it is you don't have to tell somebody that okay, this is what it is <laughs> and they feel it uh, that's good and now uh, for this episode perspective we feel try, so this is why we call, we want to call it as a slippery soap the slope <laughs> and so sorry <laughs> so anyways coming back to this uh so when we make these thinking machines shiju i mean uh, your entire architecture uh, uh with that uh, when the thoughts can invoke emotions emotions for machi- uh, for humans is very different i mean we might cry we might laugh we 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 have variety of emotions happening when it comes to uh, machines how are we going to see the emotions right i mean because that's the place where i uh, i spend a lot of my time in terms of thinking mm-hmm. how would people visualize this if this is an application or if this is a software that is in the form of a software if it has to touch the people how do they feel about it i mean the, the, should it should this have an eye and uh, you know it should it look like a human or should it look like can it look like anything should it even have a form of its own its own and in my view it shouldn't have a form so now emotions and that form right i think uh, you know if ajay you can do a research i mean if you if you can explain a little bit around it we don't have to go in depth because <laughs> this is an ip protected world <laughs> so but yeah whatever that little that you can share so the first thing that me and my team do to understand how things work or the uh, how different functionally segregated regions of the brain work is like go deeper ask more questions like if you ask what is emotion go deeper how, what does it all mean how does it emerge like at at a particular level you have emotions that are functionally segregated as well as structurally segregated cells that are capable of language processing there are brain regions that are specific for certain functions but if you go deeper there is a unified whole integrated space where different brain regions act in unison and that is a whole being not merely the sum of its individual parts mm. mm-hmm. and that is what we are trying to understand so we need to go deeper into asking how things work and what makes everything work so as you go deeper you enter the field of uh, genetics how genetic materials work how the functional networks of intrinsically intrinsically disordered proteins work how they form functionally uh, ephemeral uh, networks and they disappear so at every level of interaction from the genes from the space of quantum level where there is quantum indeterminacy and randomness at every level of interaction there is new organization forming and there are new pop- properties that emerge so this is a way we approach every question me and my team so that is the way we try to understand how emotions are deeply integrated into every way Uh, our brains work and and when we speak about emotion right and there's another way to look at it, look at it as well as an inter- one one is the yeah. science behind the emotion right yeah. i mean so we go deeper and deeper and go to the most abstract level of how it all works yeah. and are there are there concepts that we can uh, leverage yeah. in, in the space sometimes uh, and and we like to keep in, keep in mind that we are talking about a machine it's not yeah. a flesh and bone yeah. and brain and a soul exactly. and whatever whatever yeah. and then on this side what you are trying to understand is a human yeah which is a very different engineering altogether and i don't think we can ever get to that engineering either yeah. and the moment you get to that engineering you are moving out of the dimension of this wherever yeah. the, the illusionary dimension we are living yeah. in 
Shiji, you were saying. And the emotion of machine need not to be sad, Absolutely. happy. Absolutely. Yeah. So it will, it could be all because, different. Because in my view, uh, if if machines, this is one of the debates that we have, right? Um, if machine is trying to laugh, mm. you very well know that it is not laughing. Yeah. Then we are <laughs> actually a, copying uh, human's emotion to machines. Human, yeah. it's, it's basically a faked one, right? Yeah. So, are we going to be happy about the faked emotions by knowing it is a faked one? Or is it that the way you perceive emotions in your mind by interacting to that being? And that being can be, like say if you're interacting with dog. And a dog doesn't reproduce all the different kinds of emotions the way humans are. But some of them, we, and, but we manifest it, we, we, we actually project our consciousness to that dog or maybe to a snake. Yeah. There are people who consider yeah. a snake as pet. And they think that, oh, snake is now feeling sad or snake yeah. is now feeling happy. Maybe it is thinking of how to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a very different thing. So, uh, so when we think about it, I think the emotions then takes a very different turn in yeah. terms of... And you are, you are writing um, about the whole yeah. thing, right? And uh, you want to throw a little light around uh, how that is panning out. So, uh, when we think from the point of first principles, that is from the basis, the level of quantum fields and how things interact, from how do complex system, like living organisms are complex systems. How does it harness quantum indeterminacy or randomness and behave holistically at, at a space that is between order and disorder? So that is a space that complex system like living organisms is able to traverse, resisting entropy. Hmm. So at that point of time, it interacts with the environment in a state of understanding the environment that whatever signals or information that is coming from the environment, it, it produces or it processes those information to produce the best guesses about those causality. It doesn't get an absolute idea about what those uh, signals are from. To put it simply, we have no clear idea about the nature of reality. <laughs> so, yeah, then you will be called as God. Yeah, yeah. all we have is a best guesses about the nature of yeah. reality yeah. and that is created inside the brain. If you try to uh, draw the other other level of parallels, right, I mean, at quantum space, I mean, you know, the, the observer, based on the observation, the manifestation happens. And but the moment you move into our particle space and then we became, that became human like us, uh, we then become a direction oriented or a purpose oriented animal. Yeah. And there, there comes the conscious, the conscious levels and stuff like that. Yeah. So when you look at all that, how do you, how are you going to, how are you trying to visualize the evolution of the evolution of consciousness in machines? And what the natural question, therefore, is: Can machines become better than human? Yeah. That's a fundamental question anybody That's will ask. Yeah. So when we look around us, we have the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, and of course. We have the declaration of uh, animal consciousness, the Cambridge Declaration, the New York Declaration. So each and every animal has its own mind and its own space in, when it comes to the space of consciousness. And they all exert their own agency in creating their own environment and surviving. So the idea is that when agents come and they are able to interact with the environment, the environment is as important as the agent itself. Correct. Without the environment, there is no agent. Mm. So to hold on to that and to work towards maintaining the environment is the ultimate goal. Yeah, correct. Which literally uh, translates as dharma, which is present in the Hindu philosophy. That is to hold on to whatever is present around you. Only then the complex system or the living organism survive. In some other form, if I say this, will it be, will it make sense? As in, in terms of, it should be useful to somebody else. It should be use, useful to the entire environment that exactly. you live in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's the same. That's a, that's the simplest form of explanation. Yeah, yeah. Now, what happens one of the AI machine goes rogue, right? I mean, uh, this guy decides to become the criminal in the gang. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I know the question that I'm asking is, is out of the architecture that we have built. I mean, so it's a stupid question to ask. But basically, we have to speak about governance. Yeah, we will have to speak about governance. Because ultimately, we are creating an intelligent being, sentient being. It is going to be as intelligent as humans or maybe connected together a super intelligence. But we have our own architecture yeah. where humans become 
super intelligent supreme <laughs> supreme intelligent correct that's the right word probably yeah. if a super intelligence being is being designed and developed then how the play of roles between humans and machine would be i i was having conversation with ajay the other day i mean i think one hour meeting went for probably half day or something <laughs> and as usual. Uh, yeah as usual and so this declaration of um, space, space of minds, minds uh, was very very um, very apt uh, naming first of all and secondly in that uh, ajay was talking about how if if a, if a mind so the mind has two aspects right i mean so one is that local agency aspect and then the supreme aspect how that can even become uh, self destructive uh-huh. so that that machine doesn't cause issues for the rest of it so now i don't think we should be going anything <laughs> beyond that because that is that is then okay. it's going to open up everything would be so for the audience who are watching this uh, the beauty of uh, the next generation uh, uh, the next level of uh, i would say it's not even next level it's mother and father of uh, gdpr ccp ccp and any kind of regulatory aspects humans can ever think of from that perspective what ajay is working on um i think probably if i say all this somebody is going to come and shoot you and kill you <laughs> <laughs> or somebody is going to hack your brain anyways i mean good luck with you all on that uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> and so the idea is when machines become more capable uh, machines become more capable how should they interact and what should be the governance layer in which they they are going to be interacting oh. so the the, the inter- we are not stopping any of those organisms to evolve on its own but it's at the same time when they are evolving it's actually controlled by the 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 overall space yeah uh, overall mind space so there is an individual mind space and an overall mind space so the yeah. idea is to create a true agent mm. like an agent like a human agency mm. somebody who is able to exercise his or her agency is able to understand the consequences of his or her own actions so the first thing that we need to keep in mind while creating an artificial agent or an agent in in another platform exact with another fundamental properties of atoms or anything is what are the features of an agency that we see around us mm. that has been evolved over millions of billions of years and it serves a purpose in the agent survival and so on and how it interacts with the uh, life forms around itself and how it interacts with the environment so if we are able to replicate that in some form or the other there is potential of becoming a true agent which understands its environment and reacts in such a way that it behaves in 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 tune with the in environment. tune with, with the, the environment. environment so and the moment it goes yeah. off then we also know how to how to control it yeah that is what true agency is absolutely. about absolutely absolutely and i love the word by the way i mean the uh, declaration of uh, space of minds it's very very important and say, uh, the other thing is the the fascinating part of whatever that we are doing um, traditionally i mean if i may say that i mean traditionally and she can pick that up uh, traditionally uh, all technologies has been out there with a business first mindset and people mm-hmm. second mindset in our case we want this greatest and latest technology to be available for the people people so the only parallels that we have is internet yes and, and so bless internet yeah uh, internet is that altru- altruistic in nature and uh, and so what if this is coming through the internet right and so and then i think that's for another episode yes um we will we will, we will have that have as a conversation episode. later uh, when next time when we get together we will have a, a special session because his uh, declaration of space of minds paper will be supposedly over Uh, we we're going to have a fantastic interview on that sure all right thanks for thanks, thanks. Uh, ajay thank you sir